I honestly don't normally do this kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I could really do with some company. You don't mind, do you? No, that's fine. It's getting kind of tedious around here. Yeah, I know what you mean. So... Tell me. Married? Alors, il est arrivé quoi, toi? Nice to meet you. Très bien. It's a punk. Meet my friend. Evelyn. My friends call me Eve. Enchanté, I'm Frank. Nice to meet you. Take care of my friend, okay? Je vais te laisser, je vais t'occuper. Okay. Hey, punk. I haven't had a drink in a while, so. Mm, not too worry. Have you two met? No, no, never. Cheers. Episode 1, The Black Magic Cinema Camera 2.5K. Something completely irrelevant in 2020, completely. I mean, this camera is outdated, uh, released oh, seven, eight years ago for about three thousand dollars just over two grand or two and a half grand in the uk uh for by 2020 standards uh kind of lacking in you know a few areas i mean low light not great only goes to 1600 iso i wouldn't use that probably stay at 800 tops real time only there's no high frame rate uh but now you can get them on eBay for £500 uh, and I think for £400 a 2.5k cinema DNG raw kind of cinema style camera is you know it's a steal it's a steal £400 for a camera like this 100% I love this camera uh, I would never have paid two grand for it Particularly given what you can get today for two grand, but for four or five hundred pounds and a few extra bits, you need a V mount battery because, of course, Blackmagic, you know, their internal batteries, hmm, not the best. Uh, but yeah, you've just seen the results. That was a, sh a small clip of a short film I shot a month ago called Evelyn, shot entirely on the Blackmagic cinema camera in RAW. I mean, 2.5k, the files aren't huge, totally manageable. If you edit in colour grade in DaVinci Resolve, uh, you know, shooting with RAW is such a pleasure. You know, the extra, the benefits of that are fantastic. Uh, the 12-bit colour yeah, is great. I mean, so, yes, it's just, there's many things it can't do, but, you know, the few things that it can do, I, I love this camera, and that's why I want to show you um, part of the th thinking behind the short film that I made, uh, we shot that in a bar a month ago. That scene, anyway, we were around for two days all over London. Uh, we shot that in a bar in about four hours, believe it or not, using only available light through the window, natural light. Um, no, ex no, you know, I didn't bring any lights because I knew it was going to be run and gun, and we had no time to. You know mess around we were fortunate to be allowed to film in this bar just in a corner but business was still carrying on as normal there were customers coming in and out there were people just chatting and making noise doing whatever in the background so we were very lucky you know fortunately it was a good looking bar as well and everything kind of played into our hands we kind of got away with it uh which again that's part of you know the romance of my freelance life it's a lot of it is just making do trying to do your best with zero money, uh, trying to make it look the best for zero money. And I think that's a valuable lesson to be able to learn how to do that with minimal equipment and, you know, try and get like a maximum result. I think that's very key. Um, down the road, we'll get to some better cameras, but for now, uh, yeah, the Blackmagic Cinema Camera is a little unsung hero in my ensemble. Let's dive in to a few stills from the clip I've just shown you and I'll try and sort of just talk you through some of my thinking. It's kind of quite basic because a lot of it is just natural light. It's just about kind of having the camera in the right spot, putting your talent in the right spot. Uh, I think we got away with it. So 
let's have a look and we'll see what we think. So uh, this is pretty much the first shot of the, the scene that we set up. Um, John here, who plays Morris, he's the writer of the short film. He uh, he knows he knew the manager of this. Uh, it's a, a restaurant bar, basically. So he got us permission to film in there, but we had to film in the middle of the day when it was open to customers. So fortunately, this bar has got lots of nice big uh, windows in the background. There's some nice light coming from the side there, lighting John's face. Uh, I tried to stay, you know, sort of shadow side-ish. Uh, this is the, the Canon FD 55mm, uh, 1972 chrome nose, so almost a 50 year old lens, um, with a Tiffin Promist one quarter on, uh, probably an ND as well, Tiffin variable ND, so quite wide open. So this is, uh, this is the reverse of that shot. This is uh, John's counterpart. This is uh, Anusha, who plays Evelyn, the title of the short film. Uh, this lens, I think, is the it's the Jupiter 9 85mm f2, pretty close to wide open. Again, because we, we couldn't really move many things around, because it was just we were given permission to use like a sort of corner of the bar. Uh, I could only put the camera in certain positions, but I, I think you know I think it worked out quite well. Again, we're just using like the light coming from the windows here at the side, and that's it. No, you know, no extra lights, nothing like that. Now, kind of midway through this scene, Morris's friend Frank turns up here, played by Fred, who actually came all the way from Paris on the day, or just for the weekend, to star in this short film, which is uh, very nice of him. Um, he comes into the bar with his girlfriend, and he interrupts the conversation. Uh, again, we're lucky. This bar was a great choice by John. Uh, we're really, really lucky that we got to shoot in here because, again, not using any lights, just the way the practicals are set up really, really helped. Like the kind of design of it, if you like, purely by chance. So I could get away with shooting purely practicals. Uh, all this in the background is just uh, the light from the windows. There was some, uh, obviously, uh, lights coming from above, above the bar. Uh, but yeah, really lucky. I think this is the, the back to the Canon 55mm. Uh, and I think I'm actually standing behind the bar here with the bar staff who were, everyone was were really lucky. Everyone was really accommodating. They didn't really mind us, you know, doing what we wanted, <laughs> strangely enough. So Frank comes over and interrupts the conversation, which obviously creates, you know, once you start to add a third person into a conversation, I think the blocking starts to get a bit complex. I was trying to be economical as well with where to put the camera and I didn't want to do singles for each of them if I could help it because you know we were trying to get out of there and film the rest of the well a lot of the rest of the, the film that day so um, you can see uh, Morris or John aka John uh, on our, our first character there on the left he's kind of represented he stands up in shot uh, and you've got Evelyn and uh, Frank now um, Morris and Frank, well, Frank, uh, Morris kind of stands up to uh, speak to Frank. They have sort of a quiet aside. Uh, Morris says something along the lines of, you know, I haven't had a drink in a while, can you give me a lift? Or whatever. Uh, so again, just for like a throwaway thing in the script, you know, it's like a couple of lines. You have to kind of block out what you're going to do, uh, where the light's going to fall, where you want these two guys to stand. You know, you have to completely change the shot just to accommodate a couple of lines in the script, which... You know, again, it's part of filmmaking, I suppose you really start to appreciate, you know, what goes down shooting a scene, even just for the smallest throwaway gesture, throwaway look, single line, you know, you have to completely reset. Again, this is part of my thinking to not use uh, lights and just have, you know, natural light, practical light, so that way we were completely free to kind of move around and hopefully everything would fall naturally rather than having to set up a scene, change the lights for every shot, every angle. Now we're kind of back to where we started for the first shot of the scene with Morris looking across the table uh, at Evelyn. And again, the benefit of the, the big window at the side there really helping out. Um, that's kind of it. I mean, the whole thing, like I said, not a single light, purely the light through the window. Uh, and any practicals that happen to be knocking around and the positioning 
of each actor according to the light uh, and the positioning of the camera. Uh, you know, I think we pulled it off. I think we pulled it off considering the there was so little control that we had. Uh, I think you know we did well to get away with it and pull off like a reasonably credible scene. Uh, and you know the black magic for a seven, eight year old camera. Uh, you know, kind of did exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, it's got such a lovely kind of, you know, film look. Yeah, quite happy. So there you have it. Episode one, Blackmagic Cinema Camera. Back from the grave. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And uh, I'll see you next time.